The 2018 Kilauea eruption is unprecedented in size and impact. The landscape has changed and lives have been dramatically altered. One year later, KHON2 is taking a look at the lingering impact. Today, we focus on residents from Kapoho and the issues the Kapoho Vacation Land neighborhood faces till this day. Sarah Madison has more on Kilauea after the flow. So many have lost their homes and their livelihoods, but others face an additional challenge. Their homes may have survived the flow, but they don't have access to them and may never have it again. The majestic lava stretched across Lower Puna, more than 8,000 acres covered. But not everything was destroyed. Several kipuka, or pockets of land, remain surrounded by cooled lava. In these kipuka, Homes have survived. Now the question becomes how to access them. I still have one of my uh, buildings there, and it's really a lot of anxiety thinking about it being there with nobody there to keep an eye on it, and whether you know people will move in or it might get burned down. There's no way to really keep track of it. Eric Cockcroft's home in Kapoho Vacation Land sits uncomfortably close to the edge of the flow. It takes him half an hour to hike across loose, jagged lava rocks. That's why he and others are pleading with Mayor Harry Kim for a safer passage. So after I pressed him on that, uh, he assured us that immediately upon completion of the highway through 132 through to uh, the old Four Corners, that he would uh, begin looking at or even installing a temporary access. Hopefully we got a chance to explain to them where we are and where we're going, because there are people that really want to go back and they want to go back as soon as they can. I think our community needs that assurance that you will help us. Ikaika Marzo is one of the leaders who started Pu'u Honua Opuna, a hub where affected families could find donated food, supplies, and most of all, support. Marzo says he sees the desperation of residents. And people are spending so much money flying helicopters in flying all their, their stuff in for, for like a week, staying in there, flying out. So, I, you know, access is number one thing and, and also sense of closure. That's what Smiley Burroughs had to do to get to her property next to Green Mountain, also known as Kapoho Crater. The lake crater, along with her and her children's dream homes, are gone. And the livelihood she made on that mountain stopped indefinitely. Not being able to do my market every week was sad. I miss it. I missed my friends and my neighbors that supported us and would come and visit. But what was lost has now been found through a different channel. Burroughs is part of a coalition called Imua Lower Puna, a group working with the government to get people back home. So we've been very clear on sharing what those priorities are to bring success and recovery back to Puna. Burroughs says the county's efforts have been slower than expected. Their spirits, however, are still on fire. As I began to listen to my community, I saw that many of these people did not have the means to buy another place to relocate and rebuild. All they have is the land that they own, so they wanted to go back home. I knew exactly what I was getting myself into. Had a wonderful house, had my children were born there and it's still there for me. So my home is still there, and it's just a matter of getting uh, access. But I don't blame anybody for being impatient. You're talking about a lot of people that felt like I did. The most precious place on earth was taken away, and they want to go back. We hear much more from residents and share their stories on the changes in Lower Puna over the last year. Join us Wednesday as we take a look at what life is like in a kipuka, or isolated land surrounded by the eruption. Reporting from the Big Island, Sarah Madison, HON2 News.